we're back. It's Wednesday evening. It is the Valley's most in-depth weather forecast video. It's the video we affectionately call Weather for Weather Geeks. Just off the top of the video this evening, a little announcement. This will be the last Weather Geeks for about a week. I've got some time off starting tomorrow. I'm actually having a procedure done tomorrow. It may surprise you to learn that I'm just about half deaf. Uh, I have single-sided deafness, and I'm... Uh, undergoing a procedure tomorrow to uh, help to correct that, at least partially. Um, so it's uh, it's been a real adventure over the last handful of years trying to deal with this in noisy environments at the Canfield Fair, for example. Um, it can be a real challenge. So uh, I'm going to get what's called a bone conducting hearing aid. Um, and that's a uh, an outpatient procedure that I'll have done tomorrow. And then I'm heading off to Texas, actually, this weekend for the annual National Weather Association annual uh, conference, um, a gathering of meteorologists, both in the private sector and broadcast meteorologists, and a uh, good chance to catch up with a lot of colleagues and also to learn a lot of cool new stuff in the weather enterprise that'll be this weekend through early next week. All right, on this Wednesday, 83 degrees. It was another day where we had a big, what we call diurnal temperature range today, when we have lots of sunshine, dry air, and we're still at the time of the year that we have enough daylight. Um, the days are long enough. We can get these big ranges. You can see this a lot of times in April as well, where the days are getting longer, the high humidity of summer hasn't settled in yet, and you have a nice sunny day. You can have a big range in temperatures from morning to the afternoon. So we had a 32 degree diurnal range today. 51 at the airport this morning and 83 was our high this afternoon. Of course, we're in the middle of a very dry September stretch, but it should kind of ring a bell, this dry weather in September. It was just a year ago we did this. It was the third driest September on record back in 2023 at the Youngstown Warren Airport, a little more than three quarters of an inch of rain for the entire month. Now in a typical September, we averaged 3.8 eight four inches of rain at the Youngstown Warren Regional Airport. Now the uh, airport number so far this month is a little under an inch so if we didn't see a drop for the rest of the month we would be at the very bottom of this kind of top 10 list but I you know I don't think we've seen our last drop for the month in fact we'll talk about some perhaps some rain chances during the middle of next week coming up in this video but of course we're not alone in the dry weather when we look at uh, rainfall anomalies over the last 30 days so going back to mid-August you know, there's some patches of green immediately downwind of the Great Lakes up in the snow belts of northeast Ohio, northwest PA, southwest New York. And there's some patches of green here and there, but for the most part, a lot of brown on this map. It's been a pretty dry stretch of weather in much of the Great Lakes, the Ohio Valley, the Mid-Atlantic states as well. Where is the rain this evening? Well, it of course is down here where uh, Hurricane Francine officially made landfall early this evening in the uh, southern areas of Louisiana. Thankfully, a fairly sparsely habita habitated area um, south of New Orleans. Now, of course, New Orleans is being impacted by this, and there will be some squally weather with gusty winds around the Big Easy this evening. And, uh, as of the 7 o'clock advisory with Francine, a Category 1 storm, and it's about 20 miles southeast of Morgan City, Louisiana. Rapid de-intensification or weakening is going to occur tonight into tomorrow, of course, as this slowly pushes northward and then Francine just sort of peters out. It gets blocked by a ridge up over the Ohio Valley so it's not going to come very far to the north before it just sort of fades away as we go towards the end of the week and the start of the weekend but it will be a prolific rain producer for parts of the deep south. We won't see any rain from Francine around here but we will see some clouds later Thursday and especially into Friday but for the most part Thursday another beautiful day. Uh, day, once again, where we start in the 50s, end up in the 80s. That band of high, serious clouds will try to push in towards the end of the day, Thursday into Thursday night and parts of Friday. And I think Friday is still a nice day, just with a little bit of a milky sky. And then that veil of cirrus clouds will thin out enough that we'll just call it mostly sunny for the weekend. Both Saturday and Sunday are looking good. If you haven't closed your pool just yet, some nice afternoons for jumping in. Now, of course, it's cooling off at night, so unless you have a heated pool, your water temperatures are probably still a little on the cool side after those chilly nights. But the afternoons with highs in the 80s, good pool weather coming up over the next several days. Friday night football this week, no concerns with any storms this week. Kickoff temperatures middle and upper 70s, so a warm Friday evening. Now, we have introduced some small rain chances into our forecast for next week, and the reason for that is it looks like we're going to have some sort of coastal low or a storm system uh, that takes some sort of track that may flip some moisture up over the Appalachians and into eastern Ohio, western PA. Now, the confidence on this is pretty low as of this recording Wednesday evening. 
but it's high enough that we have introduced, you know, like a 20% chance of rain into our Tuesday and Wednesday forecast for next week. If we miss out on this moisture, it may be until that following weekend before we see some legitimate rain chances. But at this point, we might get clipped by at least a little bit of rain during the middle of next week. Before we leave you this evening, I want to talk a little bit about the uh, longer range. Uh, earlier this week and late last week, we talked some about the longer range forecast. So we get updates from long range models during the first half of the month, primarily. On the fifth of the month, it's the European uh, long range forecast. We talked about that. That would have been last Thursday. Around the 10th or 11th of the month, we get uh, an update from what's called the National Multimedia Ensemble. And we're going to focus on winter. And here's a look at water temperatures for the winter season according to this suite of long range modeling. Here's your La, uh, La Nina right here. And it's kind of a basin wide La Nina, this big blue stripe across the Pacific. Not necessarily east based. You don't see all the blues centered over here. Not exclusively west based, but kind of a basin wide La Nina. And because it's not advertised to be especially east based, um, it's no surprise that its resulting forecast for the uh, winter season is pretty classic basin-wide La Nina stuff. So in other words, here's the precipitation outlook for the winter off of this modeling, and this just looks like textbook weak to maybe moderate basin-wide La Nina with wet weather in the Pacific Northwest, wet weather around the Great Lakes, and then a dry stretch from California down into the Deep South. This is just, you couldn't draw this up to look any more like just a typical La Nina, and it's no surprise, of course, with the way it depicts water temperatures with that classic kind of basin-wide La Nina look, that its temperature forecast for the winter looks like this, pretty much a warm-looking map for much of the U.S. Now, as I talked about when I showed you the European modeling last week, if we do get more of an east-based La Nina, that increases the odds of a colder-than-average winter, central-based or basin-wide, you start tilting the odds more in favor of yet another warmer than average winter season. So, you know, over the next couple of months, I'm going to show you some of this long range modeling because I know it's of interest as we get into this time of the year. But our official winter forecast is still a couple of months away. I think uh, we're probably looking at just after Election Day in early November, maybe as late as two months from today, maybe November 11th, something like that. That's when we'll do our official winter forecast. But over the next 60 days, I'll keep talking about what the modeling is showing as we approach yet another winter season. In the meantime, thanks for watching Weather for Weather Geeks this evening. Have a great rest of your night, a great rest of the week, and a great start to next week. I'll see you next Wednesday, the 18th, for the next edition of the Valley's Most In-Depth Forecast.